Welcome to the official Cordwood Challenge introduction video. My name is Steven Edholm. I have a website called skillcult.com and a YouTube channel by the same name. And this year I'm running something called the Cordwood Challenge. So the backstory on this is that last year, well, here's the real backstory. Last year I was making a video on splitting wood and I was trying to explain the difference between splitting wood, you know, like, uh, you know, splitting wood this way and chopping wood like across the grain, which is an important distinction if you actually spend time chopping wood. But no one knows that anymore because nobody chops wood hardly. I said something in the video like, um, you know, people who actually still chop their wood, um, you know, with an axe are total badasses and then there's the rest of us. And then later I was thinking, wait a minute, I'm a total badass. Why am I not chopping my wood with an axe? And so I decided to do that. I set out to cut a cord of wood with an axe in like three months. So the project was a huge success for me. Um, I really enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. I learned even more than I thought I would, although I knew I'd learn a lot. I just got better at chopping and I learned a lot about efficiency and technique and strategy and stuff like that. And I also just gained a lot of insight into, um, yeah, what that whole process is like and what it's like to be limited to just using an ax and never ever deferring to a saw. Pretty much right away, I thought uh, this would be a great thing to have other people do too and introduce other people to. And that's the Cordwood Challenge was born. And here we are at the beginning of the new year. It's a pretty good time, at least here, to get your firewood put away so that it's all ready and split in the spring and it can just start seasoning while you get on with spring chores. Some people are gonna get this project and some people just aren't, and that's fine. Um, we don't all have to do it. I, I don't not only don't think that everyone with an ax or who likes axes should do it, I think um, that's just simply not the case at all. I think there's a lot of people that shouldn't do it. But you certainly shouldn't do it if you don't understand it. And if you're, you know, I think there's kind of two kinds of people. There's people that are gonna make excuses to do it under, you know, difficult circumstances even, and people who are gonna make excuses not to do it regardless of what the circumstances are. I just fell into the first category because I just really wanted to do it. It wasn't easy for me to do it last year. There was, you know, a personal cost to me to do it and I just did it anyway. And I'm glad I did. But the one thing I would say about that is that there's gonna be people kind of on both sides that don't really understand what they're getting into and may think that it's more work than it actually is or may have a romantic ideal of what it's like and then we'll quickly find out that maybe it, it doesn't match that. I would say that if you haven't spent enough time with an ax to start to get efficient and, and, and make, uh, you hit a point where it starts to become more enjoyable, just like anything else. It's like learning to play an instrument. At first you sound terrible, your fingers hurt, you know, it makes no sense, but then at some point you hit a breaking point and you start to become more fluent. It's like learning a language. You become fluent in the language and you start being able to express yourself and it just becomes a lot more fun. So especially for people who uh, maybe have a real negative view of using an ax, that may just be because you've never been in that place and, and so it's just not an enjoyable activity. So I think as more people do the challenge, um, hopefully we'll see how that goes. I already have one person that's finished, so you know, hopefully at least a few people will do it. But as more people do it and people see what it's like for them, they can start to get a feel for what it's really like when you have it together, you know, when everything comes together and it starts to actually work, then I think that'll probably kind of shift some people. Because if you take a person with no experience and you give them an ax that's not well tuned, you know, it's not ground at all, uh, it's maybe dull, um, you know, and they, they just really don't understand how to approach the work at all, they can spend tremendous amounts of energy and get almost nothing done. And that is because when using an ax, it's the fine points that matter. Like very, very small adjustments can make all of the difference in how efficient the whole process goes. And if you cut a large quantity of wood in a short period of time with an ax, you will be forced to get it together and you'll be forced to improve because you just can't, you can't pull it off. You know, you can't function, you'll end up quitting. And that's why I think doing it the way that I'm setting it up is really valuable is because it is challenging and it does kind of push you into a position where you have to perform. Now this all presumes that having a high degree of skill with an ax is something that is of value to people who would participate in something like this. So that's important because this is uh, time consuming and it's very dangerous. I mean, there's no two ways about it. It's a dangerous activity and if you don't think that it's very valuable, then you shouldn't be doing it because you're just 
putting yourself in danger for no reason. And honestly, you know, most of the populace of the United States could care less about being able to use an ax. I get that, that's just a different perspective, but for me it's important and I have my reasons for that. And, um, you know, I'm willing to take that risk and do that activity to get, gain those skills. And it's not just that, a lot of it's just that I like it. You know, I enjoy using an ax. If you don't enjoy using an ax and you don't think it's worth knowing how to use one really well for a wide variety of tasks, you know, not just splitting and limbing occasionally, then, you know, don't do it. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm setting it up the way I'm setting it up, which is you need to cut a quantity of wood. It's either gonna be a quarter, half cord, full cord or more with just axes and no saws. I have one exception for saws, which I'll get to in a bit here, but I'm setting it up that way because that is how you're gonna get good with an ax. So if I fell this tree behind me, which I will later in the spring, and then, I so I've made two cuts, right? I have to make a face cut with the ax, and then I make a back cut with the ax, and then it falls over, and then let's say I take the limbs off with an ax, but then I stop and start using saws. Well, how much practice is that? Like, how much practice am I gonna get putting up a cord of wood? Well, I can tell you it's not very much. So that's not really gonna build my ax skills very much. If I buck the tree, like cutting it into firewood sections, then this is going to be, this tree's going to be like 15 or 20 cuts or something, um, you know, cutting all the way through the log. Now that's a lot of chopping. Not only that, bucking is a skill all its own. So if you are only felling and limbing, you're not getting good at that skill. So if you do all that and split with the ax, then you're really getting practice at all of the basic like ways that you use an ax in the woods. You know, carpentry and carving are separate, but that would kind of have to be a separate uh, challenge of some kind. Who knows? Maybe we'll do that in the future. But uh, for now, I mean, this is just a great way. And to do it in a short space of time really will build your skills faster than spreading that same amount of work over, say, an entire year. The other thing about it is that it's, it's not just any work, you know, it's not like taking a pile of logs in a sand pit somewhere and, and just chopping it into pieces and making a bunch of chips just to practice. It's a different experience to be fulfilling your own needs, you know, so when I go and get my firewood out of the pile and put it in the wood stove, I just really like the whole feeling of knowing the backstory of that wood and that it was just, you know, a bunch of calories and me and an ax and, you know, trees and there I am putting the thing in the wood stove and staying warm. And I think a lot of the people that are interested in homesteading and self-reliance and primitive skills and bushcraft and stuff like that, I think a lot, of, a lot of what they're seeking is really that and that feeling and just knowing that they have that kind of competence with um, their environment and tools and abilities to be able to like do stuff for themselves and be more self-reliant. So either you get that or you don't too. But I think that's an important component in this whole project is that it just reduces something to something so simple and so basic as a piece of wood, you know, with a piece of steel on the end of it and your own body and your own skills because the skill part is extremely important. If I turn a noob loose with this ax, it's just going to be, you know, tragic comedy basically. So it, and what it takes to get good is just spending a lot of time chopping. There's simply no substitute for that. So that's why I set the project up the way I did for myself and why I'm, you know, keeping that format. I mean, there's other benefits too. I may do a, a separate video on just why to do the cordwood challenge, but obviously you get a lot of exercise. I know very few people that could use less exercise. It's time spent in the woods, you know, learning about the woods and having, you know, being in a position where you have to study um, your environment and understand it. And uh, yeah, it's all good to me. I, I love all of that stuff. I, I just love every part of this project. So before we get into who should and shouldn't do this and the rules and all that, I just want to make a quick disclaimer. This is an extremely dangerous activity and it's, it's just inherently dangerous. It's not going to be safe if you follow, you know, this rule or that rule or always do this and always do that. So you need to accept that and accept responsibility for your own decisions. When you're sitting in the emergency room with your foot wrapped in a, you know, your bloody t-shirt and facing like, you know, surgery to reattach tendons or something like that, it doesn't, it's not going to matter who you blame or whatever. It's still going to be your fault. I mean, you walk out, if you pick a thing up and swing it, then you have to just accept responsibility. And if you walk into the woods with any attitude besides that, then you're in trouble already. You know, you need to, for your own safety's sake, you need to be accepting responsibility for your actions all the time and living that way. And that's, um, 
an attitude which is unfortunately uncommon these days, but I think is bad, we badly need back. Because again, when you're injured, when you're you know limping around for the rest of your life or whatever, you you really don't have anyone else to blame. I mean, you pick the thing up and you did it. You are responsible for what you do with the information you consume. And not everyone knows what they're talking about. You know, I'm gonna make videos about using an ax and using an ax safely and stuff like that. So what? You know, that doesn't mean that I know what I'm talking, how do you know if I know what I'm talking? I don't even know if I know what I'm talking about. You know, I don't even know if the techniques I use are safe. I'm gonna be honest with you about that, but a lot of people aren't. So whatever information you get, you know, run it through your bullshit detector and don't ac accept any of it as just true. You know, you can use working assumptions. So you can say, well, that sounds reasonable. I think I'll try that and kind of assume that's true for now. You know, engage your own intelligence in doing this stuff. So in far as far as who should do this, um, there's an overarching concern, which is just that you need to kind of know what's going on out here in the woods a little bit before you start chopping down trees. And this isn't just a matter of, you know, idiots versus uh, smart people or anything like that. It just takes time to, to learn. I remember walking out, you know, when I was a city kid going out in the woods and I just hadn't, I didn't have a clue. Like I didn't know what species was what. You need a certain amount of that kind of knowledge in order to make good forestry and conservation decisions. Because in most environments, I mean, some people think it's bad to cut a tree down at all. I just think that's whack. I mean, basically in most environments, especially because, um, you know, all, all, almost all the woods anyone would be cutting trees in have been logged and re-logged and burned and all kinds of stuff. There's usually things that we can do to intervene to basically improve the forest. And when I say improve, I'm talking about, you know, healthier trees, um, more food for wildlife and stuff like that. So, you know, you need to know a little bit about what's going on. So if you don't understand any of that stuff and it really feels completely foreign when you walk out in the woods, um, that's something that you should start taking time to learn. But it does make a difference what you cut and what you don't because trees take a while to grow and a lot of them don't come into bearing. Say like, you know, this tan oak tree is not gonna, didn't start bearing any acorns for a long time. It doesn't just sprout up and start making acorns right away. So the, the things that you do do have an impact and we should be thinking about those. And in most cases we can use the, the fact that we need firewood to actually steer the forest in a healthier direction. People obviously exist on a spectrum, you know, a wide spectrum of expertise with using an ax, but I'm going to divide us into simple categories just so I can, you know, easily talk about us. The first category would be complete beginners. So maybe you don't own an ax or you don't know how to use it, you don't know how to sharpen it or it's not sharp. And those people I would discourage from doing the Cordwood Challenge um, this year. If you are really interested, I think that's great. And you can just start, you know, getting warmed up, you know, get an ax, learn how to sharpen it, consume a lot of information on axes and start getting warmed up, you know, start learning to chop. And um, I just don't think that it's a good idea for someone in that position to challenge themselves and put themselves in the position to have to perform. Now, if you pull it off anyway, like so let's say you just start getting warmed up and you start doing some chopping and then the wood starts to accumulate and by spring you have a quarter cord or a half cord, then yeah, send me a picture and you're in as far as I'm concerned. I just don't want anyone to feel any pressure or to put themselves in a position to have to perform or feel like they have to perform when they don't really know what they're getting into. And also, you just don't even know if, if you like the work or not. I mean, I don't think you should do this. I don't think mo some people maybe, but I think most people shouldn't do this unless they actually enjoy doing it. So then there's a the middle category, people that may have like a fair degree of competence with an ax. I would put myself in this category somewhere in the middle. And that's really why I did the cordwood challenge is because I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable with this and I can use it okay, but then I would think about doing a large quantity of wood and compare myself to someone say in the 19th century that chopped cords of wood every year and think, well, that I, I would like to be able to be like that more. And so I knew that if I just processed a lot of wood, I'd get a lot better. And I think people in that category um, are really the people that can benefit the most from this and kind of the people I have in mind for the cordwood challenge. You know, I can tell you as a, someone who's fairly comfortable with an axe before starting this, I'm way more comfortable with an axe now. I'm much, much better. I understand strategy better and I can just get wood processed much more efficiently. But again, for you guys too and for everyone, you don't need to commit to anything. So you can just say, you can tell me you're gonna cut a quantity, you can tell me you're gonna cut a small quantity, you can tell me nothing and just show up later and say, look, I did it and here's, here's the wood that I cut.
And then there's pros. Um, not very many people out there fall into this category, but if you're someone, let's say you're someone that already cuts two cords of wood with an ax every year, I'm sure there, there's gotta be some guys out there. Uh, please, yeah, I'd love to have you on board. I'll send you, you know, uh, prizes and everything. And I think that everyone could benefit from your expertise. You can show the rest of us noobs how it's done. So I'd love to have you guys on board too. And ladies, uh, yes, you can do this. It's totally doable. A uh, great example is the Vito girls who are probably 18 and 20 or something around there. And these girls could out chop, um, you know, the vast majority of people that make ax content on YouTube and blogs and stuff like that, I'm quite sure. Another example is Morris Kahansky was talking about in one of his videos, a class that he had, which was half boys and half girls. And he said the girls out chopped the boys because they would concentrate on the important things and actually listen to what he was saying, which is to concentrate on accuracy and system. So physically, probably not an issue at all. You can do it and I'll try to do whatever I can to make you feel as comfortable as possible. Um, you know, as far as engaging the Axe community or whatever, if uh, people make any untoward lewd comments or anything like that, I will tear them a new one, delete comments or whatever I have to do to keep you guys feeling comfortable. And you probably will get some because honestly, we just think a girl with an ax is totally hot and we'll try to keep that to ourselves though. And uh, please do come on board. We'd love to have you. Finally, kids, uh, I'd love to have you on board actually, but I need to talk to your parents if you are under 18. That's the deal, period. It, before you leave comments about that you're doing it, before you know you post, send me pictures or videos or whatever, I just want to talk to your parents because that's the legal age in the country I live in where you're an adult and you can do whatever you want and cut your foot off if you want. But until then, they're, they're going to blame me for whatever happens to you. So uh, again, I think it's great if you're interested, but I just want to make sure that we clear that with uh, your parents so I'm clear. Okay, so the rules are pretty simple. Um, you cut a quarter cord, a half cord, a full cord, or more. And those can be in 12 inch, 16 inch, or 24 inch lengths. Any of that's fine with me, but no, you know, 30 inch lengths or 48 inch lengths. It's obviously a lot more work to cut 12 inch wood than it is 24 inch wood. It's almost twice as much work, but you know, we're gonna keep it simple here. So anyone that cuts any of any of those amounts will get, you know, recognized basically. I'll I'll post your picture. I'm I'm not sure how I'm gonna set it up yet. I may have a page for each person or I may just have one page where everyone's on there. I'll probably do a video featuring everyone that did the cordwood challenge and you basically get recognition. If you cut up to a half cord, I'm gonna make a small leather badge. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool. You know, I tan all the leather myself and I'm making like a wooden stamp, which I'm actually like forging the tools to carve the wooden stamp and everything. That whole thing is just a cool project on its own. So it's gonna be like a Boy Scout merit badge, just like a representation that you did something really cool, uh, except it's gonna actually be cool. And then if you cut a cord or more, you get um, one of these, which is an ax strop or like a little pocket strop, back pocket strop. And I'm doing a whole video series on making these. I'm tanning the leather. Uh, I collect all the wood here, I make the glue, everything. Uh, so, you know, I'm investing a lot of myself into this project just to like prove to you and, and put myself out there and say, look, you know, I mean, I'm not only am I participating myself, but I'm willing to go out and put a lot of energy into this project. And uh, hopefully that'll make it seem more doable to other people. I mean, this is just a great tool too. I perceive the need for this last uh, year. And uh, this year, every time I go out with my ax, I have one of these in my back pocket and it's just been great. I also use it, knives with it and everything. And if you cut more than a cord, well, you know, that's its own reward. So, and all of it is obviously, you know, you're not going to cut a cord of wood for this little Cracker Jack prize, no matter how cool it is. And obviously you're doing it for other reasons. So yeah, anyone that cuts a cord or more gets the ax drop and a patch. So I realize a lot of people that may want to do this are not going to be able to do it. And, you know, people have their own reasons and excuses and that's fine. You can even leave, you know, you can leave an excuse and that's fine. Don't feel whatever no pressure on anybody really um the only people i was tempted to pressure was people who produced axe content on the internet like blogging and on youtube and stuff but you know i'll just say that i really think that it would benefit you uh, and your credibility and benefit your audience to do something like this so i hope the, to get some of you guys on board and i'll probably contact some of you personally so stay safe out there that's the most important thing make your goal not just to cut this quantity of wood 
but to cut it and get out unscathed. That's what I did last year. My goal was not just to cut a cord of wood, it was to cut a cord of wood without cutting myself. I'm gonna to put together some resources. First of all, I have a playlist on my channel, which I'll link, um, that's just the best ax videos, like the best, most useful ax videos I could find. I'll be making some of my own content to the extent that I think I can help people with uh, using an ax safely and efficiently. I don't really think I'm the best person to do it, but I'll just stick with what I feel like I know, and I think I can, I think I can help a lot of people with that. The two books I would recommend, um, first of all, definitely get uh, Dudley Cook's The Axe Book. It's really just all about cutting firewood with axes. It's an outstanding book. That doesn't mean that I necessarily accept or believe everything in it, but it's just, it really is an outstanding book. And Morris Kohansky's Bushcraft, uh, is also excellent and it's really good with safety and all kinds of stuff. Just an excellent book. So I would say those two are, are essential reading. Avail yourself of anything else you can find, especially stuff on felling. Felling trees is very dangerous. There's all kinds of things you need to know and I can't tell you all those things and I don't want the responsibility of like putting all that together and telling you all of that. So avail yourself of whatever's out there. Be critical, but um, do avail yourself of that information and do learn what you're doing because it's extremely dangerous. Like, it, you know, this tree may not look that big, but it's just falling trees is dangerous and you're putting yourself in danger every single time you do it. So that's my message there. Stay safe. I hope that no one will get hurt, but I kind of expect that someone will. Honestly, if this gets as big as I want, I think someone's going to get hurt. Uh, someone's going to get hurt badly. Someone could get killed. I don't think that's a reason not to do it, personally, because people do dangerous things all the time. They jump out of airplanes. They ride motorcycles. They go skiing. How dangerous is that to barrel down a hill at 50 miles an hour or whatever it is, uh, you know, on the snow? So we do dangerous things. It's just a matter of whether we think it's worth it or not, and I think it's worth it doing this. So I'm making a page um, where you should leave any relevant comments. You can leave comments on this video, that's fine. But anything where you're saying, I'm going to do this, or I did it, or anything major related to the project should go on the web page on my site. It's more of a destination, right? So I just want to have that as like the hub, and we'll, we'll just work off of that. So that will be skillcult.com slash cordwood challenge. And finally, before I go, a shout out to Tim Springston of Oxbow Farms. He has a YouTube channel called Oxbow Farms, and he has already finished cutting his first cord of wood. And he's considering cutting a second cord of wood because the project was so much fun and he learned so much. This does not surprise me because that was pretty much my feeling too. And, uh, but you know, big respect to Tim for just going for it and getting that done and jumping in and, and uh, yeah. You know, it's kind of an unknown when you, you first started, if you haven't done anything that big, it was just not as intimidating as I thought it would be, you know, when I really actually just jumped in and, and committed and said I was going to do it. So I think as more people do it, again, people like Tim, it's going to become uh, clearer what it, it really entails and what the possibilities are. So, you know, when you first go out, you may not be as proficient as Tim started out, uh, for instance, or as me but you can see what's possible and that it's it's not this like thing that is just unachievable so i really look forward to working with any of you who have whatever it is that it takes whether it's um, balls of steel or brains of mush to uh, take this project on and uh, it's just really a lot of fun and I, I look forward to that part of it of just like having some camaraderie and sharing with people um, that have kind of done and taken on the same thing and learned the same things and had the same similar kind of experiences. So I'm going to send you to that page now and if you want to tell me you're doing it, do it there and eventually send me a picture with you and your axe and your cord of wood or make a video or send me video footage that I can use somewhere or something like that just to prove that you did it and we're good and uh, good luck and have fun.